Hey everyone, welcome back. Let's take a little break from all those Jurassic World reviews and get back to some good old fashioned accurate dinosaur figures. Today we're going to take a look at the new Collecte Edmontosaurus. I got this big old hunk of plastic from Minizoo. It retails for $35 and I'll leave a link down below the Minizoo if you want to order this figure. And I have to say, when I got my package in from Minizoo, I ended up getting uh, four Collect Day figures. I was not prepared for how big this Edmontosaurus uh, figure is. It's almost the size of the thing that my wife likes to call a dog. So yeah, really blown away by the size of this beast. It's nice to have a nice large Hadrosaur figure. I always say this about Collect Day, they always hit the perfect balance of accuracy and affordability. Their figures are some of the best values on the market and this Edmontosaurus is no different. So before we throw this figure up on the turntable, just like most Collect Day Deluxe figures, you do get a little pamphlet with some facts about Edmontosaurus and then you do get this little 135 little Explorer Safari paleontologist dude I guess that you can dis uh, display next to the figure you know for size comparisons so anyways let's get this stuff off the Edmontus ow <laughs> and get this thing up on the turntable and let's start this 360 degree view of this beast of a figure like I said this thing is absolutely huge and it's a heck of a bargain for $35 uh, you don't see many figures this big in that price range like if this came from PNS so it would probably be at least 60 to $80 and it has a nice natural looking color scheme. A lot of browns and green. You have some nice dark brown striping along the back. The uh, rooster comb crest on top of his head is decked out in red paint. Um, it does not specify what species of Edmontosaurus this is. There are two of them, uh, Regalus and Anectins. And this is most likely Regalus because uh, that is a species that that uh, crest is known from. But that also doesn't mean that uh, Edmontosaurus Anectins did not have this type of crest. Just need to find a specimen uh, with that preserved. And, you know, we know a lot about this species. Um, you know, fun fact, Edmontosaurus was the first full skeletal uh, dinosaur ever mounted in the US. And I've actually had the pleasure of seeing it. It's at the Peabody Museum of Natural History. And like I said, we know a ton about this species. We have skin impressions, uh, you know, there's hadrosaur mummies displayed at the American Museum of Natural History. So yes, a very, very well-known species. And I think this figure captures the essence of it. And now for some measurements, this figure is a whopping 13 and a half inches long and about four inches tall to the top of the head. So Edmontosaurus regalis is around 39 feet long. So I put this figure in the 135 scale range. If you want to count this figure as a Nectins, it is around 49 feet long, which is a very, very big animal that put this figure closer to the 144 scale range. And now let's zoom and take a look at some of the finer details on this figure, starting with the head. Pretty typical for Collect A figures. 99% of the time, they always paint the eyes a straight black color. The head is nicely sculpted. The beak is decked out in gray paint. It has a nice worn look to it. And then looking inside the mouth, you can see there's some nice details in there. And the inside of the mouth is painted a pink color. Going down to the rest of the face, you have all nice fine scale details around there. You can see the nostrils painted in. There is the air canal. And now moving on to that rooster comb. Uh, like I said, this is uh, was discovered on an Edmontosaurus regalis specimen. And you can see it has a nice uh, <clears throat> testicle uh, look to it. And if it, is it just me or does the Edmontosaurus uh, crest impression look like this thing got teabagged? You can see the crest has some nice, uh, you know, dimples and wrinkles on it. And going down to the neck, you have these very, very large neck scales. And they do look oversized, but this is actually what the scales on the neck look like. Because we know this from uh, skin impressions. And it almost looks like, like a, maybe these are really thick osteoderms. It almost looks like a coat of armor around the neck to maybe protect it uh, from the large predatory dinosaurs that, you know, inhabit its region. And then going down to the body, we get some more nice, beautiful scale detail. We have greens, whites, and dark browns, and light browns all over the place. It has a really nice paint job along the back. You have a nice row of large scales that goes all the way down to the tip of the tail. Now going down to the front feet. Uh, this is a new thing a lot of companies have been doing lately, given, uh, you know, Hadrosaur uh, figures. This giant 
uh, hoof, like uh, appendage on the end of the feet. That is because uh, there was an Edmontosaurus, the Dakota specimen, which has not been formally described yet. It had this really large hoof. I think it was on the third digit. Um, we don't know if it's going to be the norm for Hadrosaurs. Maybe that specimen uh, is an anomaly, but we definitely need more data to see if this was the norm for Hadrosaurs. But you can see, you know, Collecti has been always quick to update their figures with the latest discovery, and I think they did a pretty good job on it. It's a little too much hoof-like. It should look more nail-like. Um, I saw like a artist rendition online, but it's so minor, it's really not a big deal. You can see some nice detail on those hand claws decked out in green paint on the ends of the forelimbs and high limbs going down to the hind legs. Nice muscular detail, lots of folds of wriggle. The scale uh, detail in this figure is absolutely beautiful. Going down to the feet, the feet are decked out in light gray paint. And let's take a look at the underside. They do have some nice detail. The underside is all done in white. And then since we're over here checking out, uh, let's look at those flavor blasted classic collected cloacas nice and dirty just the way i like them and then going down to the tail you have a really really thick tail base viewing it from the top nice thick and chunky a very uh solidly built figure with all this plastic it just shows you how big and powerful uh hadrosaurs could be tail has all that nice light and dark brown stripe and all the way down you have this little bit of a white dry brushing to bring out all that nice scale detail so yeah this thing is absolutely beautiful. I consider it one of my favorite Hadrosaurs in my collection currently. Now moving on with comparisons, let's start off with the 135 scale dude that you get included with this figure. And next up here is Safari Limited's take on Edmontosaurus. Now this figure came out in 2020 and it came out right before that Dakota announcement. You can see it has the old oven mitt style uh, forelimbs, but I'm okay with that. Whatever it turns out to be, I will be fine with it. And let's continue to compare this thing to other Hadrosaur figures. Here it is with PNSO's Parasaurolophus. And next up, here it is also with PNSO's Lambiosaurus. And next is the infamous PNSO. Caroline and let's see she, yep you're gonna stand tape it's okay Caroline I've been really bad to you lately I'll be good what the ginger no <laughs> and next up here it is with Papo's Gorgosaurus uh, Edmontosaurus regalis uh, existed with Albertosaurus hopefully someone someday can make a nice Albertosaurus figure and next up is the previously reviewed Spinosaurus you can see their bolt sizable figures. The Spinosaurus figure is a little bit longer, but the Edmontosaurus is definitely a much heavier and beefier figure. And let's do a couple T-Rex comparisons. Here it is with PNSO's Wilson. And this really shows you uh, how big Edmontosaurus really was, especially uh, a Nectins. You know, uh, a predator would think twice about uh, tackling a fully grown Edmontosaurus. I know Hadrosaurs are usually portray portrayed as being you know, helpless and defenseless. Uh, they weren't. Their size and strength was their defense. You know, getting cracked by that tail, if you're a T-Rex, you're gonna have a very, very bad day. And lastly, let's compare it next to the Collect 8 Feathered T-Rex. And I think it's such a weird figure to, you know, to get them you know, side by side and see what they look like just because of the way the figures uh pose uh, i think these two figures do scale uh reasonably well with each other i like the way wilson looks next to it a little bit better can really hammers home how big edmontosaurus could get but yeah he can definitely you know pose this on your shelf it looks like the t-rex uh is going after so you definitely have some display options so final thoughts on Collecte's Edmontosaurus. I think it's a great figure. It's a nicely sculpted figure. You know, it fits into a nice budget, only 35 bucks, and you're getting 13 and a half inches of figure. It has a nice paint job on it. And right now, it's a very accurate figure because they included, you know, those large, uh, you know, hooves on the front. You know, in the future, we'll know if that's the standard or not. But it's all around, it's a great Hadrosaur figure, and it really hammers home how big these animals could get. But yeah, I do highly, highly recommend this figure, especially if you're looking for a Montessori figure for your collection. 
And like I said at the beginning of the review, I got this figure from Mini Zoo. Link is down below in the description. And I'm sure it's just a matter of time before everything dinosaur uh, gets the new collect day figures in. So that would do it for the review. Still have an absolute butt ton of Jurassic World stuff I need to get to. Uh, got a couple more accurate dinosaur figures on the dock. I still got uh, the collect day Pteranodon and their last year's Dilophosaurus, which I completely forgot about until I did my mini zoo order and a couple other things coming up. So stay tuned for all those reviews. And as always, if you're enjoying the content on this channel, show your support by hitting that subscription button just below the video. Each subscription helps out the channel tremendously and it's greatly appreciated. And I'll see you guys for the next one.